wealth, and I want to provide you a little insight about financial advisors. Most financial advisors have to sell what their company requires them to sell, and many advisors have to only adhere to what's called a suitability standard. A suitability standard is a limited standard of care, not requiring what's sold to be best, just suitable. Advisors with this loose standard often have limited investment and product selection. Trajan Wealth is held to a fiduciary standard, which is the highest standard of care in the advisory business. And that's just one of the many reasons we have billions of dollars under our care and attract clients from other advisors. Raise your standards today and call Trajan Wealth. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but up until a couple of years ago, I had no idea what NPS was. I'd heard about it. Some friends said, yeah, I saved money on electronics when I got in there. And But when we, the movie show finally went to NPS, I was blown away especially when I went over to the industrial side. I love to go through bins and just find stuff. And things that I had no idea that I wanted or needed, I found. And when you find them, you buy them right then or you don't get them at all because they go through their inventory changes almost daily. I love NPS. I love the management, Julie, Igor, Sandra, Tammy, all wonderful people and if you go in there the smile on the faces of the people that work there is uh, just everything to me so give yourself a break go to nps get a great deal and meet some wonderful people traffic and weather together brought to you by sinclair's dino pay app save up to 20 cents per gallon here's jason jones and we still have this accident northbound side of the west side belt uh, off to the left shoulder right before you get to the 4100 south overpass and that's it i mean that's pretty much all we've had all morning long we did have a car fire like earlier to talk about but uh, that's gone as well and so right now i-15 is just moving fantastically all along the wasatch front there is uh, no problems at all anywhere uh, to speak of. And your major feeders over to I-15, those are all looking really good at this point as well. No problems in your canyons as you travel about uh, this morning. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. Windy and warm today with a high around 60, but then a storm moves in Saturday with stronger winds, rain, and turning to snow Saturday night. Right now it's cloudy and 52 degrees. I'm Amanda Dixon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We are Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. New Year, new KSL movie show. Now you can listen when you're running errands at lunch. This is Andy Farnsworth, and I'm joined by Steve Sales for all the week's biggest movies and shows, 11 to 1 on KSL News Radio. It's finally Friday, and this is Dave and Dijanovic. Conversation and insights on the stories Utahns care about most. It's Friday on KSL News Radio. And it is a big day on Capitol Hill. It is the final day of the legislative session. Uh, we're going to have live teams and crews and shows all afternoon long until 9 o'clock at night tonight, Dave, as the legislative session winds down. There's some important work left to do. It's always like the last night before a big final exam in college uh, where they have to cram a whole bunch of stuff in. That'll be happening all day long today. And the session is only 45 days, but I have no doubt if it were 60 or 90 days, we'd be in the exact same cram. It would be exactly the same. It's 9.07, and it's time for the launch. Sequence. 
Defense engaged. Brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Here are the three things that Debbie wants you to know. Countdown three. I heard this on Utah's Morning News this morning, and I thought, my goodness, hurricane force winds possibly blowing uh, along the Wasatch Front, mainly in the mountains, over the weekend. Um, uh, we may face the brunt of the snow here, too, uh, across the Wasatch Front as well. It's supposed to start snowing tomorrow, late afternoon. Uh, we're going to have a full report from the National Weather Service in just a few minutes. They're calling the show live to give us an update on what is looming out there. But other states facing such severe weather that ski resorts around Lake Tahoe telling skiers, <laughs> this is like reverse marketing, stay away. Why would you want to put your family through that? Why would you want to put them through it? Because the snow is amazing. That's why you want to put your family through that. But the huge winds, that's a big part of the story. It started last night. It was rattling my gazebo. So the the big difference between the hurricane force winds and what we're, we get the gusts. We get the big gusts, and then it kind of subsides versus the hurricane that just blows nonstop. Countdown to... Well, today our country is celebrating Employee Appreciation Day. Weird, really weird, because there's a brand new survey that asked employees if they get recognition or feel appreciated by their bosses. And most say they do not. Boo who? <laughs> that sounds so mean. Okay, I think we underestimate the importance of getting a paycheck, of them every two weeks sending me direct deposit, and it arrives every time. That, for me, is thank you enough. Man, you have gone mad. It's your job. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. Launch countdown one. Okay, we are down to the wire for the NHL NBA arena billion-dollar package that lawmakers are trying to craft and squeeze and pretzel together before the uh, midnight rolls around tonight. Uh, there's likely going to be something passed today. So many people are on board the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints just issued a statement about it. They've got to push it through today. We know they've pushed through the MLB funding package. We've been covering that all week long. Um, but the NHL NBA stadium would sit smack dab uh, in the middle of downtown Salt Lake City. And Dave, I think I think you figured out where this could go. Instead of thinking about this as a hockey arena or a basketball arena, we're not building an arena, we're building a city. Nobody wants to support the billionaires building their sports stadiums. That's very unpopular. But, 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 if we're talking about a reinvestment into downtown and a revitalization project, that's something that I could get behind. <laughs> it's about the arenas, folks. You can say whatever you want. It's about a big, beautiful jazz stadium and then with a little side of hockey. <laughs> it's like, here's the delicious steak and a delicious a la carte side of NHL. Dave and Dijanovic. The launch. Commence. Dave and Dijanovic. Dave and Dijanovic. Special coverage of the top local story. Oh, we'll be going live to Capitol Hill in just a moment to figure out where things are at. And the legislature certainly, they're trying to figure this one out. Um, <laughs> how much help they're going to lend to building number one or building number two or possibly three brand new professional sports arenas. Um, it's what they're calling the entertainment and sports zone. So smart. Again, it is so smart. The marketing? It, yeah, the marketing of this. This is how you pitch it because tweet after tweet, post after post, I'm reading is, we're not subsidizing billionaires. The governor himself said, I'm not in the business of subsidizing billionaires. This is not what we do. That's what he said when the Major League Baseball thing was announced. He said, oh, we're not going to fund it. But if we're talking about development, now I can get on board. It's twisting it a lot because these arenas make no mistake they are billion dollar projects golden state warriors they just built an arena you know, three or four years ago that was 1.4 million dollars in san francisco four billion 1.4 billion billion yeah 1.4 billion las vegas is building the a's stadium for 1.5 billion mm. so sure you can talk about it as an investment in the community 
But the crown jewel and the key to all of it is the sports arena. Well, Senator Damick, I listened to his speech uh, on the Senate floor. Uh, he's been he's been at the front of the pack on this. He's been pitching this plan uh, for the last week. <laughs> Uh, we just learned about it in the last few days that was not only going to be an MLB package, but also an NHL, now an NBA package, kind of rolled into one for downtown Salt Lake City. Working with Salt Lake City and working with Salt Lake County, we feel like NHL and MLB and, uh, and, you know, and keeping the jazz downtown makes an important uh, investment in the state of Utah. It makes an important investment in our urban downtown core and makes important, really generational investments in in the state. I find it very interesting that he used the the frame or the the words a generational investment in the state because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, who obviously uh, own huge parts and, and leases out huge parts of of downtown, released a statement yesterday. Mm -hmm. In regards to this, and they said the church has always demonstrated interest in making Utah's capital city uh, make sure that it remains vibrant and attractive, both for those that live and work there, as well as those who visit. Now, this is this is the real key here to the, the church's statement. As a stakeholder in the downtown community where the church global headquarters is positioned, we're pleased with the potential this has, speaking about the arenas, to refresh and revitalize downtown Salt Lake City while presenting a safe and family-friendly gathering place for generations to come. It's getting through. Um, and I'm not only saying that because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints released that statement. I'm saying that because the Senate president called Utah's morning news days ago on Monday. He said it's the goal to get this over the finish line, along with the MLB funding. Um, uh, Dan McKay continues to push it on Capitol Hill. Uh, I hate to admit it. He's got power up there. <laughs> we get along mostly, right, Senator? Um, he's got power up there, and he's flexing it. It'll get through, um, also because it has strong support from City Hall. And, of course, it does. And that's a key. Because it takes it off City Hall's plate to have to figure out how to save downtown Salt Lake City. It means it's a statewide, state-funded, taxpayer-funded project that completely uh, gives a, a facelift to at least one part of town. And I think you figured out where, what part of town. Oh, do I tell it now? Not now. <laughs> it's, it's a guess, but I don't know. It's a pretty good guess. Let's go live to Capitol Hill to figure out where this funding package is at. Just hours left in the 2024 legislative session. We're not building an arena. We're building a city. Don't think of it as a subsidy. Instead, think of it as an investment. Dave and Dejanovic. A lot of us are filling our workdays with podcasts. When you're working, go to kslnewsradio.com. Click on Dave and Debbie's podcast and pick a topic and story length. Podcast with Dave and Debbie. Then get to work with KSL News Radio. Do you enjoy fishing, hunting, or just soaking in the beautiful outdoors? Then you need to check out the KSL Outdoors Show airing Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. and midnight on KSL 5 TV. Outdoors with me, Adam Eagle, is a unique show that takes viewers on a journey through Utah's beautiful backcountry. Watch it live every weekend or find the Outdoor Show on YouTube, KSLoutdoors.com, Facebook, and Instagram. It's the KSL Outdoors Show brought to you by Camp Chef. The Cougars pull out a big win on the road. Beating the seventh-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. Saturday, it's BYU, TCU. Right down the barrel and right through the hoop. Pre-game is at 6 and tip-off at 7. Listen Saturday on Utah's legacy home of Big 12 basketball and the BYU Cougars. KSL News Radio. American energy is under attack. Joe Biden has waged a war on American natural resources and made it harder to produce affordable, reliable, and clean energy right here in Utah. Our energy prices are already going up. Biden's policies will make it worse. But Republican John Curtis has our back. There is no greater supporter of unleashing American energy than John Curtis. John Curtis knows our abundant natural resources help keep us free and safe, powers our economy, keeps the lights on, and keeps Utah on the move. John Curtis is Utah tough. He's taken the fight to Joe Biden and the Washington politicians who all want to hurt American energy. And now we need a conservative to take the fight to the United States Senate. 
We need Republican John Curtis, a strong defender of American energy dominance in the fight for us. Paid for by Clear Path Action Fund, not authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. Be advised, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to save 40 to 80% on a hot tub and swim spa this weekend only, today through Sunday. Utah State Fair Park. Be advised, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to save 40 to 80% on a hot tub and swim spa this weekend only, today through Sunday. Utah State Fair Park. 18-month interest-free financing. Our factories have demanded we sell 1,000 hot tubs and swim spas this weekend. Utah State Fair Park. Huge factory incentives, factory rebates, this weekend only. Utah State Fair Park. We can remove your old hot tub. Free delivery of your new hot tub. Hot tub starting at $2,999. Utah State Fair Park. Free delivery of your new hot tub. Just relax and enjoy. Utah State Fair Park. Friday, noon to 8 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Free admission, free parking, free delivery. Utah State Fair Park. Call 833-SPA-SALE or visit hottubandswimspasale.com. You wouldn't trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antiques. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but AMCO to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Check out AMCO's multiple financing options, so you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. Double A, MCO. Are you looking to get a COVID-19 booster to stay healthy this cold and flu season? If you join the Beehive Study, you'll have the chance to receive up to $550 for getting a booster and completing weekly COVID tests and brief surveys about your health. Don't want to get a COVID-19 booster? That's okay, too. You can still join the Beehive Study and receive up to $550 for completing weekly COVID tests and surveys. Help advance research at the University of Utah while taking care of yourself this season. Call 801-203-0320 or email beehivestudy at utah.edu to learn more. You can also visit the study website at beehivestudy.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Amanda Dixon. First, the legislative session ends tonight at midnight with the budget still needing to get passed. Second, we have a decent-sized storm moving in, bringing strong winds, rain, and even snow to the valley floor. And third, it's going to cost a lot more for anyone caught speeding in a school zone. Legislature passed a bill raising the minimum fine from $50 to $260. Right now it's 52 degrees in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Eye on the Hill 2024. Special coverage with Dave and Dujanovic. Look, I'll never be the mayor of Salt Lake City, but let's pretend I was today. I would absolutely uh, <laughs> throw be- a parade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, if the legislature gets this NHL M- NBA funding uh, for the arena secured by midnight tonight, which, which is when they when they time is up, time's up at midnight tonight, and we will be live by the way up there on Capitol Hill as a station, KSL News Radio, fully dedicated, all in on the last day as we have been all session long. Uh, Boyd will be up there live. Uh, Jeff Kaplan will be up there live, and also KSL at night live from Capitol Hill. So, if I'm the mayor, I'm totally tuned into KSL News Radio. I'm downloading the free app today, or I'm texting the word news to five seven five zero zero to get our freebie alert that comes straight to your cell phone on when this legislation gets passed. Because wow. Um, it does put stuff a lot on City Hall's plate, for sure, because this would be in downtown Salt Lake City. But it sure takes a lot of pressure off, like, what to do with a dying downtown. And that's not an overstatement. I'm sorry, since COVID, this is a completely different city. And they and they tout there's a lot of great things going on, and there's no shade on the wonderful things that are going on, but you and I have worked downtown. I've worked downtown. I've been a news reporter since 1990 in this market. I've covered downtown. I've worked down at KSL Broadcast House since the year 2000, covered the Olympics. Covered. It is a much different city. It's just not as vibrant. It hasn't, you know, life hasn't been completely um, brought back to this city since COVID for a lot of different reasons. But you... You were looking out the window today during our show prep meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning. The sun was rising. The city looked gorgeous. We could see Capitol Hill. And you lit up like a Christmas tree. Because I could envision it. And then outpoured 
about three sentences from your mouth about where this stadium, uh, where this NHL NBA arena is going to be built. Tell them. That is the place, I think, is <laughs> what I thought. You did. Right across the street from Broadcast House. Where we're now, sitting. Now, if we kind of do a, uh, you know, four corners, we've got Broadcast House. Where we are. Where we are. KSL Desert News. Just south of us on, on 300 West is the Delta Center, the current mm-hmm. where the Jazz play. Uh, and then, you know, you've got the Convention mm-hmm. Center. And then in the in the northeast quadrant is a ginormous parking lot. It's the size of a city block. It's a full block. It is a full block. Mm-hmm. And then if you go a little further east, you have the Plaza Hotel, Family Search Library. You could eat up easily another half block of parking lots. Well, you go across the street to the Delta Center for a parking lot if you if you take the Delta Center out. If you were to take that out or perhaps you refurbish that and make that into the NHL stadium and then you build the new Jazz Stadium across the street from us here at, next to Broadcast House, it's wide open. The easiest build project in all of downtown is to take an entire city block of parking lot and turn it into a stadium. It's the same size as the Delta Center, maybe even a little larger, so it absolutely could fit a brand new arena. Holly Richardson, Utah Policy, also writing for the Desert News, uh, live with us right now, and you're keeping an eye on this uh, Senate bill. Um, Where is it at right now? For sure. Yep. Tell us where so it's last, So it actually underwent a, a series of changes yesterday, and so it has to go in the House side, so it has to go back to the Senate. But what happened yesterday is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints released a letter that said that they were supportive. They said they were pleased with the potential effort, <laughs> excuse me, to refresh downtown. And so I think that really uh, gave th- this bill a little boost. They've changed the name a little bit. So instead of reinvestment zone, it's now a revitalization zone. And if you remember a couple of days ago, I said the Senate sponsor, Dan McKay, said we're not building a stadium, we're building a city. So I think this new version of the bill reflects that. It passed 50 to 20 last night, and it's headed over to the Senate. But I think its chances are very, very good. Okay, Holly, stand by. Uh, Here's a clip from the Senate floor of sponsor um, Senator Dan McKay talking about the, the fact that we are building a city. We're not building an arena. We're building a city. Think of that capital city's economy and how it represents and serves all of Utah. Second... Don't think of it as a subsidy. Instead, think of it as an investment. To your to your point, that's exactly how they're reframing this because, Holly, I'll be honest, it doesn't matter if it's Utah or across the country, the idea of giving billionaire owners huge right. subsidies and paying for arenas is profoundly unpopular, but a reinvestment or, as you said, a right. revitalization is far more palatable. That's right. That's right. And, you know, as you've already mentioned, um, the mayor of Salt Lake City is really on board with this. It's Mayor Mendenhall, and she's she's been quite supportive of this. Um, so, again, I think with the the whole idea of it's not just a hockey arena, it's going to be this whole area and an opportunity to, quote unquote, revitalize the downtown, um, I think this bill is going to pass and probably relatively easily. Holly Richardson with utahpolicy.com also um, with, writes for the Desert News as well, and she's been a great help for us in these last uh, f- these final days leading up to the last night of the legislature, which is tonight at midnight. Let's remind our listeners, Holly, how this will be funded and how much um, taxpayers will have to foot and how that will happen. Well, uh, a key funding mechanism is that they're raising the sales tax. So it's supposed to be not more than 30 years, but they're raising it by a half a percentage point. And it doesn't sound like a ton, but uh, when you talk about tax increases, especially when the legislature keeps doing tax cuts, a half percent is not insignificant, actually. Can you clarify, is that sales tax increase sticking just in the Salt Lake City area, or did lawmakers expand it with the new with the new substitute? 
No, it's Salt Lake City. Okay. It's still it's still just the city. Yeah. So a half a percent and probably 30 yeah. years? Yeah, they'll probably take the full time, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is the legislature, and so you could come back at any time and say, okay, we're going to extend that for, you know, X number more years or whatever. I mean, that does happen. But um, it's right now it's a 30-year uh, tax increase to go from 7.75% to 8.25. Now, this is not uh, terribly uncommon. You've got state and local taxes, so everybody's uh, local tax or whatever you pay in right. in, in any that's city, right. that's it's very common for it to fluctuate by a half a percent or a per, even a, a point, a point and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And they're they're estimating that the sales tax would generate approximately 83 million a year. Um, but they do say that you could have other first class cities in a first class county who can raise those taxes as well. So I was incorrect, even though the conversation has only been about Salt Lake City. It actually is a little bit broader than that. So maybe all of Salt Lake County? P- potentially, yeah. And again, they're they're looking at this is, I mean, this is not your billion dollars, right? This is eighty three million dollars, and so there's got to be um, other other money coming in. And, and I think you'll see that with businesses and developers and those types of things. Wow. Holly, lots to cover today. I know you're going to be extremely busy. We're so grateful for your your help, your support of the show today, and making sure our listeners are well-informed about what's going on on Capitol Hill. Holly Richardson of Utah Policy, you could check out um, all of her um, articles there uh, and also at Deseret.com. Um, if they are, thank you, Holly. That's great. Uh, if they are estimating that this tax increase, the the point five percent, will raise eighty three million dollars in a year, you stretch that over three years, that's almost two point five billion. That's not taking into account any inflation at all. So the the amount of money essentially that is being authorized is two point five billion. You extrapolate that over 30 years, and it's going to be billions of dollars. Check your math. I'm usually the one that has math problems. Yeah. $83 million a year times three years. Oh, you're talking 30, 30 years. Because okay. it's a 30-year thing. Right? Okay, okay. So 30 years. Wow. I, that's a ton of money. That's a ton. But you'd said these stadiums are costing well over a billion dollars in other parts of the, of the country. Yeah, right. and and if if you put it off, uh, let, let me just go back another uh, seven or eight years. Uh, a, an arena would cost about five hundred million dollars. The Milwaukee Bucks, they build a brand new arena. It's a hockey, NBA, and it costs about five hundred and fifty million dollars. So just in the last eight years. If you were to build that exact same thing, it would be over a billion dollars. Don't forget, in our 10 o'clock hour, uh, we will be live with the National Weather Service about the winds and the snow that are on their way to Utah. We'll also be live on Capitol Hill, walking you up to the final minutes of the legislative session all afternoon long. Straight ahead, it's Employee Appreciation Day. Well, that's weird, because a survey says... We'll talk about it next. 931 at KS on News Radio. I'm Amanda Dixon. Our top story this hour, Rocky Mountain Power says they are prepared to deal with strong winds and snow all across the Wasatch Front over the next couple of days. KS on News Radio's Heather Kelly has more. Officials say this weekend's storm could bring down power lines and cause outages. Rocky Mountain Power reports it already has crews ready to respond to any issue this winter storm brings. They're also reminding everyone, including kids and pets, to stay away from downed trees and power lines as the wires could be live and very dangerous. You can get more information on how to prepare for and report an outage in your area at RockyMountainPower.net. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. The storm headed our way is causing a lot of problems in the Sierra Nevadas, where it's expected to drop as much as 10 feet of snow. Ski resorts near Lake Tahoe are asking people to not come this weekend because it's just too dangerous. 
new Utah drivers will not be allowed to have friends in the car. A bill that would have allowed 16 and 17 year olds to have friends in the car within the first six months of getting their license did not make it through a Senate committee. The bill's sponsor decided to run the legislation after her daughter was caught breaking the rule. The committee said it would be too dangerous and lead to even more distracted driving. Your money at this moment. The Dow is up just two points right now. We're at 38999 Coming up, here comes the storm for the weekend. KSL Weather is next. KSL News Time, 932. It's a priority for us at this station to bring you all sides of a story and to talk about the news fairly, completely. Get all the facts and be really aware. Utah's Morning News with us, Tim and Amanda. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. It sounds optimistic. When I first heard it, I thought, oh, there's, there's just no way. But there's a secret to losing up to a pound of fat every day. I've been working with Salt Lake City Fat Loss. It's a new company. They're brand new to, to Salt Lake, but they're not new to the fat loss game. They've been doing this for a long time, and they've seen some incredible results. And I'm experiencing some of those incredible results. Many clients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two. And uh, I'm, let me think, 35 days in, and I've lost 36 pounds. So I'm doing exactly what they promised, losing a pound of fat every single day. I feel fantastic. No surgery, no injections, no point counting, no exercising, and no prepackaged meals. And the prepackaged meals was a big thing for me because I wanted to learn, okay, what to do for the rest of my life, not just a, a crash diet. And I feel like I've absolutely learned that. Go to Salt Lake City Fat Loss. Uh, you can Google it. You can go to the website, slcfatloss.com is the website, slcfatloss.com. You get a free consultation in person or virtually, or give them a call, 801-450-1882. That's 801-450-1882. A lot of you already know that when it comes to HVAC maintenance, repair, and replacement, no one helps more homeowners than any hour services. And if you've been thinking about replacing your old furnace and air conditioner, this ad's for you. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and right now we're having our most popular sale of the year. Here's how it works. When you have Any Hour Services install a new air conditioner, we'll give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it, about 400 bucks. The furnace is free. You just pay the labor. One of the reasons this sale is so popular, there are no gimmicks. Like, you have to buy our most expensive air conditioner to qualify for a free furnace. You could buy our most basic, least expensive air conditioner, and you'd still get a new furnace for just the cost to install it. All you have to do is call Any Hour Services by March 31st and schedule a free estimate. One of our HVAC supervisors will come to your home and explain everything. If you think you might be interested, call Any Hour Services today and schedule your free estimate. 801-443-7400. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Rick at LoansByRick.com has some important information for anyone in Utah and Idaho who's thinking of buying a house. Do it now. Don't wait until summer because home prices in those two states will likely increase by 10 to 20 percent due to in-migration from California and other states. That means a house that costs 400000 right now will go up by 40 to 80 grand with multiple offers. Interest rates may drop later in the year, possibly to the 6% range, but the increased cost of the home will mean that your monthly payments will go up by a lot. So start looking and buy now. Refinance when the interest rates go down. Waiting to buy your home will only hurt you in the long run. For more details and buying strategies, call Rick at loansbyrick.com right now. 801-809-SAVE. Rick can evaluate your situation and get you on the path to buying a home today. 801-809-SAVE or click loansbyrick.com. Rick Kirschbaum, NMLS 241179 and Vintage Lending, NMLS 287106 are equal housing lenders. Some restrictions apply. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And here's Jason Jones. Down to just one emergency vehicle left in this accident southbound on the west side belt right before 4100 south. Uh, the, there was a car that was with that emergency vehicle that it just drove off just a couple of minutes ago. So uh, it's still not affecting traffic, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. In fact, nothing seems to be affecting traffic anywhere out there on the roads. The roads are dry and the speeds are good. North and southbound I-15 from Payson all the way up to Ogden. No trouble there at all in and out of Tooele, no problems. Looking good in and out of the canyons as well. The ninth annual Salt Lake Off-Road and Outdoor Expo, March 1st and 2nd at Mountain America Expo Center in Sandy. Over 40,000 in giveaway prizes. Kids 12 and under are free. 
I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. That storm is moving in later today. We'll have a lot of wind ahead of that storm tomorrow. We'll have rain and then rain turning to snow Saturday night. Some snow in the valley on Sunday. We might get as many as five inches here in the valley. Right now, let's see where we are. It's 51 degrees. I'm Amanda Dixon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. Well, today our country celebrates Employee Appreciation Day. That's so weird <laughs> because a new survey asked employees, you know, if you feel appreciated, if you get recognized from your boss, you know, and most say they do not. <laughs> So why do we even have an Employee Appreciation Day? Uh, do you feel appreciated, Dave? Absolutely. Uh, do I care about Employee Appreciation Day? I do not. Well, let's talk about this survey. Um, do you feel like you need an attaboy once in a while? No. Why not? I'm not an attaboy guy. Okay, there, there's a big difference between having an attado- attaboy from my boss you know, or managers, whatever, and you, right? You're my direct coworker. We're equals. If you give me a compliment, I value that far more than if my boss gives me a compliment Mm -hmm. because you're really in the trenches with me. We do this day in and day out. Now, one of my favorite shows of all time is Mad Men. And there was an all-time line by Don Draper. And it was (laughs) when one of his employees, and he's, you know, he's the superior, she was so frustrated because she didn't feel like she got the credit. And Don Draper's response, I this I'm sure our bosses are just loving this conversation because <laughs> uh, this is this is how he explains it to his underling, to his you know the person he employs. It's your job. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. He says it. So harshly in such a mean way. It, that's terrible. But I think the message is so strong, and I think we take for granted what our companies do for us. We just assume, oh, yeah, I mean, I work for them. They give me a paycheck. That's what. Okay, but what about all the benefits that you receive from working from your job? Like what? Let me just go off the top of my head. Number one, paid time off. Right? They... They pay me money. This was a concept my kids are just blown away with. Like, they pay you money to not go to work? I'm like, they pay me to not go to work for a month out of the year. That is an incredible benefit I've got to value. Uh, recently, they raised our life insurance. They just they, We didn't ask for it. We didn't demand it. We didn't bargain for it. We didn't have some labor union come in and demand this. They just said, we're going to... We already offer some life insurance on all of our employees. We're going to double that. I mean, that that is incredible. They didn't have to do that. They just do it. Mm-hmm. That appreci- We are fortunate. I don't think everybody has it the no, same. No, no, right? I get I it. Mean, it we, not we, all companies we, are yeah, the same. Yeah, I want to acknowledge that. Absolutely. And some companies are better than others. I'm just saying with right. what I'm experiencing right it. now, I'm looking You're at You're looking it. at the bright side. They contribute to my 401k. Mm-hmm. Health insurance. This is a big shocker. What, whatever you pay for it, health insurance. Um, they pay, let me do some quick math, 80% of my health insurance premium. They're paying $1,700 a month. I only have to pay a few hundred dollars. They're paying the other mm-hmm. half of it. And I don't think a lot of people realize. You're like, oh, I'm spending so much on health insurance. Well, Find out how much your employer is matching or contributing to your health insurance. It's a staggering amount. Mm. I don't need the attaboy. That's what the money's for. Do you know what's free? What's that? Thank you. <laughs> it's it's zero cost. You're not wrong. <laughs> to say thank you. Job well done. Uh, send a quick email that says, wow, I really appreciate you went above and beyond for the company and you came up with some great ideas. Thank you. It's totally free. It doesn't cost a dime for a company or a boss to do that. 
you're absolutely right. That, and it's easy. It's a good practice. I, I'm not I'm not denying that. But uh, there was some some great research and some surveys done. I can get this for you, Dave. Let me let me go down the list and bounce okay. this off you. So this is in the category of boss fail. And in a moment, we're going to give you some ideas of what uh, employees wanted in terms of, um, you know, the the attaboys. And some of them do cost a little bit of money, but a lot of them don't. Um, in the category of boss fail, 61% of those surveyed in this talent L- LMS survey that went out, 61% of employees say they rarely, never, or are only sometimes recognized by their bosses. But almost a third, like almost 30%, fall into the rarely or never category. I would feel lost if I worked for a boss, and not, thankfully I don't I, um, work for a boss like this who never said thank you or that's a good job what do you, because I, I would feel directionless. Like, am I performing where they want me mm-hmm. to perform? I, you know, I get a yearly review, but what happens at the six month mark if I haven't been doing the right thing? I mean, the thank you is also for me affirmation that I'm moving in the right direction. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't want to confuse that with uh, guidance. Right, an attaboy versus communication and guidance. I don't necessarily see as the same thing. Your boss can communicate you with you and say, "Hey, this is uh, this is something you can work on. This is something we're, a direction we're headed. Hey, you know, nice job here." But I, when when we're talking about like real appreciation, I guess I think of it in, in a larger sense, like maybe public recognition of of. Yeah. My work. Yeah. Um, let's get into those details. Like, what do employees want from our bosses when it comes to appreciation? Is it money? Is it just a, a, a pat on the back? Is it a gold star on our computer? Is it recognition during a, a meeting where we stand up and we all cheer for each other? Yeah. We do that here. Uh-huh. And I love that. To me, that's just... I get it, embarrassed. It's totally free. Oh, really? I'm going to do yeah. that to you every meeting now. Uh-huh. We have a we have a new we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday and watch, so watch we'll, my face. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna be there's <laughs> gonna be like dare. seven attaboys for Dave. You're gonna sit down and be like, <laughs> no. I'm gonna plant attaboys. <laughs> Amanda Dixon, Tim Hughes. All right, we're all lining them up. Adam Small, we're all on deck for Dave on Wednesday's uh, statewide meeting. We've also put this question on KSLNewsRadio.com because we have this awesome polling feature. Um, it's Employee Appreciation Day. Is a paycheck enough to feel appreciated, or do you need a thank you from your boss? 801-575-TALK. 801-575-TALK. I mean, is this how you feel? It's your job. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. Or do you like the occasional, hey, good job, way to go, thumbs up, you're amazing from the boss. Do you need that too? Because I think you do. 801 talk 801 talk Your call's next. Dave and Dujanovic. You know KSL is the only news radio for your car, right? The only news radio for your smart speaker. Come here in the morning. It's the latest news and traffic. In the afternoon, news and updated weather. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Derek Overstreet, founder of the New Millennium Group. We're a financial planning firm. Listen, we're fiduciaries. We have advisors standing by right now to take your call. That's 888-999-6370, 888-999-6370. The reason you're going to want to call is we're going to help you retire three to five years before you thought possible. Now, imagine how that would be if you could actually retire three to five years sooner than your plan was. The way we do this is by putting together a step-by-step plan, taking into consideration any rental properties that you have, any pension income that you have, your social security. Listen, we put that all together for you in writing. It will allow us to to build your income based on inflation. You know, inflation has been rapidly rising. You and I both need a plan that whatever we start out our income at, in five or 10 years, we're going to need 40% more income. So if you're one of those people listening and you'd like a plan in writing, give us a call at 888-999-6370. That's 888-999-6370 or go to utahsfinancialplanner.com. At KSL News Radio, we have a 30-year legacy of honoring Utah teachers, but we can't do it without your help. Please tell us about an important teacher in your life on the KSL Teacher Tribute Wall, presented by Cypress Credit Union. 
Each month, one lucky teacher wins a $500 gift card from Cypress Credit Union, a $250 gift card to Harmons, plus season tickets to Hale Center Theater. Say thanks to your teacher today at kslnewsradio.com slash teacher from Cypress Credit Union and KSL News Radio. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC. Member SIPC. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. It's easy to think all money managers are pretty much the same. But at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different? How? You sell high commission investment products, right? No. Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission-based investment products. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. Nope. Never at Fisher. We're a fiduciary obligated to act in our client's best interest. It's the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. How do you know what's in their best interest? We get to know our clients and then tailor a portfolio based on their goals and needs. But you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No. We have one transparent management fee, structured so we do better when our clients do better. Wow, you really do look out for your clients. That's because our top priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. It might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments, clearly different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Amanda Dixon. First, Rocky Mountain Power says they have extra crews on standby as strong winds and snow move into Utah over the next couple of days. Second, the Roots Tech Conference is back in Salt Lake City. The annual event hosted by Family Search is billed as the world's largest family celebration and discovery event, and it brings a lot of people to downtown. Third, new Utah drivers will not be allowed to have friends in the car, a bill that would have allowed 16 and 17 year olds to have friends in the car within the first six months of getting their license did not make it through a Senate committee. Right now it's 51 degrees in Salt Lake City. Back to David Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. David Dujanovic. Uh, is a paycheck enough, or do you also feel like you need an occasional pat on the back or a thank you from the boss? Dave and I taking a look, uh, in-depth look at a new survey that shows 61% of employees rarely, or never, or just sometimes get a little recognition for a job well done. And I think some of the problem is we're just not acknowledging the attaboys we do receive. Uh, if you get a little bonus... If they increase your vacation or if they give you some more personal time off, uh, if, if you're allowed to have some flexible work options, all of those things I view as an attaboy. In a second, I'm going to go over that list of what we do want as employees in the order that we want them based on percentage. Uh, we also put the survey at kslnewsradio.com or at least our question. We're going to take live phone calls in a matter of seconds. So hold the line. Let's see. Ike, you're first up. And then is it Heidi? Um, yeah, Heidi and Mill Creek. Stand by, Heidi. We're going to get to you in just a second. Um, it's Employee Appreciation Day. Um, is a paycheck enough to feel appreciated, or do you need a thank you from your boss? That's at kslnewsradio.com on the right side um, of your desktop there. Take the survey. Go to kslnewsradio.com. Take our survey, um, and I'll give you the results of that in just a moment as well. So, Ike, you there? Ike in Salt Lake City. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Hey, uh, this is one of the few times where I agree with Debbie. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm usually a Dave guy. Awesome. But, but, uh, but, yes, uh, uh, my company, I work for a company that's very good about rewarding its employees. And, uh, like, they, they brought breakfast in for everybody this morning. And uh, they've been keeping up with, uh, with the inflation and that kind of stuff. But honestly, uh, 
just like Debbie said, it's free. Nothing really uh, uh, gets your motivation and lifts your morale like your boss, your immediate supervisor, noticing that you're doing superior work and pulling you aside and saying, hey, Ike, I appreciate what you've been doing. You've been killing it lately. That's awesome. And uh, really appreciate it. A little slap on the back. That little, you know, I mean, that takes five seconds. And it, that will lift up an employee's morale and get him fired up to keep doing a good job more than anything. You know, not more than anything else, but, but it definitely is a plus, and a smart manager will do things like this. Thanks, Ike. When I was a rookie reporter uh, over at Channel 4 News across the street, I, I got there uh, in 1990, and I was 23 years old. Uh, and I'd come straight out of Yuma, a very, very small market, Yuma, Arizona. Um, and I came here, and, you know, I was a... Uh, a lost fish in a really big pond. It was a huge step up for me in market size. I was very grateful for the opportunity. Obviously, I love Salt Lake. I love Utah. I uh, fell in love with it, and I've stayed, right? I'm, I'm still here, and I'm going on 57 this month. You can wish me happy birthday in a few weeks. Um, so there you go. That, But I had a boss there, and I have great bosses here too, so they do plenty of things for me here to make sure I'm appreciated, and I've felt that way for a number of years. Um, he would leave notes. Just a, a great job yesterday, Deb, right. on that story yeah. note on my keyboard. Did we have keyboards back in 1990? Called typewriters, Deb. Yeah, my, typewriters. no, we had just transitioned uh, to computers. Uh, we had typewriters in Yuma, but um, it was it was kind. You know, it made me feel appreciated. Uh, but there's a lot of other things uh, that we would love too, and some of that does have to do with money. 59% who took the survey from talent. LMS. Did I get that right? M L M S. Heidi, stand by. We hear you're back. I we don't know. You get guess you got bounced off the air here for just a second. So we're gonna get you back on the line in just a moment. Fifty nine percent say cash bonuses. And then forty eight percent say paid time off. So we do like the cash. I don't think it needs to be thousands of dollars. Maybe it's just a fifty dollar gift card, you know, or a twenty five dollar gift card. I got a twenty dollar one recently. For doing uh, what? Well, I did something nice for somebody, and <laughs> I ended up getting some Crown Burger out of it. You got a twenty dollars gift card, cool. and our producer got a twenty dollars gift card to Crown Burger because you saved my day when you picked me up in a dark parking <laughs> lot, or Caitlin did, uh, after I got booted off the tracks train uh, at six thirty in the morning, and then you drove me from all the way downtown to South Jordan, um, and it was an hour and a half out of your way home. The gas is cheap. You're an electric car. Yeah, my electric car. Gas was cheap. <laughs> and it, but it, I, it was appreciated. Do you want to get I, Heidi I on the that line? That was cool. Hi, All right, Heidi. Heidi. Hey, hold on, Heidi. Before I, before we ask you, I just want to say uh, Ike went Team Debbie. He's like, I normally go Team Dave. <laughs> so, Ike, I don't know. I got to buy you a T-shirt that it. is like, I'm now Team Debbie. Welcome to the Team number one, Ike. Where, go ahead, Heidi. Where do you land, Heidi? <laughs> team, team Debbie or Team Dave? I'm going to be impartial, Team Debbie and Team Dave. Oh, I love it. We don't have that T-shirt, but okay, that's fine. Let's, <laughs> Go ahead. Let's hear. Um, I just wanted to let you know I have two of the best bosses that I could work for. And what makes them so good is they will take the time to appreciate what I'm doing just out of the clear blue Occasionally, they'll give me a day off and say, hey, you've done a great job. Here's a day off. That's awesome. Or they'll just tell me, hey, we couldn't be without you. You're great at what you do. And I have been at my job for over 40 years. So that's, that's amazing. saying something. Well, we all want to apply to your your uh, place of work there, Heidi. So congratulations. That is incredible. Thanks for the phone call. Hi, we're, hi, Rick. Hey, how are you guys today? We're good. How are you doing? Well, I'm fabulous, and I appreciate you taking my call. And I have to concur with the caller just two before me. I I am in total concurrence with with Debbie on Aww, that. Love I, it. Maybe I've got. A, I'm getting blasted a, right now. <laughs> I'm getting blasted <laughs> right now, Rick. I love well, you, Dave. Dave, you are not wrong. That is exactly right. But work and our relationships and mortality are more than just quid pro quo. I think maybe this is an old school, old school mentality, but there isn't much that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that's more important than how we serve 
one another, love one another, and help one another. Yeah. It's all about the human interaction and the human relation. And that's kind of, I think, what Debbie is bringing out to us. You know, you talk about the benefits that we get and the payroll and, and everything else. The cheapest attaboy you can get is an attaboy. Yeah. Or a thank you. Yeah, I just said thank you. It's free. Not it's free ninety nine, Rick. Right? It's free ninety nine. Uh, why not do it? And one of the things that we do here at, at KSL News Radio is when it's somebody's birthday, we always recognize birthdays and some you know balloons if, if it's streamers even if it's on a saturday or a sunday uh we get text messages uh somebody brings cake or donuts and that it's you know maybe costs a little bit of money but it just it goes so far in terms of making you feel included and special and so many of us like don't have family around too. yeah i mean we can be a t- a t- typically be kind of a transient kind of business um, in, in terms of, you know, people are coming in from all different parts of the country and the world. I mean, we have Hugo from Australia, right? Hugo Ricard Bell. Yeah. Um, and he's from Australia. So it's nice to be recognized. And that's another thing I think that's important. Put, put streamers and balloons on somebody's desk. Yeah. yeah for, for people that do everything, and we, we work for a great company this way, they, they do both, oh, sure. right? They yeah. they do the the behind the scenes stuff and the public mm-hmm. appreciation. But if I were in an either or world of whether someone's giving me you know constant praise and and you know all this information and all this uh, validation versus somebody that doesn't tell me a thing, but instead helps me with my health insurance, life insurance, mm-hmm. time off flexible work options. I just, I value that so much more than I do the public recognition component of it. And I just think I have to remind myself, my company, even if they don't give me the pat on the back publicly or, you know, pull me aside, I look at all the other ways that they are, that they are saying thank you with benefits Mm -hmm. and a salary. And that's enough. That's enough. Well, in this survey that we've been talking about, only 3% of those surveyed said they don't care about appreciation at work. So that's saying something. I think a lot of employees thrive on feeling appreciated. Uh, Straight ahead, we've got some major winds heading our way. Um, I I already felt them driving on I-80 right by the airport this morning. I was shifting all around. I can't imagine what those semi-trucks were feeling like. So we're going to get live with the National Weather Service next. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 10 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top story this hour. Final day of the 2024 general legislative session. And KSL News Radio's Adam Small has a rundown of some of the bills that still need a vote to get to the governor's desk. One of the biggest bills we're keeping an eye on is the one that helps clear the way for a new NHL stadium in downtown Salt Lake City. That bill did pass both the House and the Senate, but the House made some changes to it last night, so it needs to go back to the Senate. A bill looking to keep the NIL contracts of Utah's college athletes private only needs to pass the Senate to get to the governor's desk. There's also a bill that could limit some services for Medicaid recipients in the case of a shortfall that needs both the House and the Senate to sign off. We'll be live on Utah's Capitol Hill this afternoon and evening to keep you up to date. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. Former President Donald Trump in a courtroom in Florida today for a hearing in the classified documents case. The special counsel is proposing a new date for the trial in July. Trump's lawyers argued the case should be dismissed. Here's ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley. The judge here, Judge Cannon's under a lot of pressure uh, given how she's been a little political in some of her rulings. So I think she'll be careful to sort of hand Trump another win given how she's been slapped down by the 11th Circuit in prior decisions. This case could hinge on a a decision from another court on uh, presidential immunity that might make its way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Your money at this moment, the uh, Dow Jones average and the Nasdaq both having an up day right now. And we, of course, have these strong south winds uh, coming in before a cold front and a winter storm tomorrow. That's next. KSL News Time, 10.01.
Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. There are products that offer up to a 20% upfront bonus just for opening an account and up to 12% per year for retirement income. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and I've heard from other advisors saying this is too good to be true. No, it's not. We are one of the few who can offer products like these because we're independent. We're not registered with a broker-dealer who tells us what we have to sell, and we don't have to answer to a board of directors who prioritize shareholders over clients. So, is an upfront bonus up to 20% and 12% per year growth for income too good to be true? For most advisors, yes, but not Trajan Wealth. The fact that many of our clients come from other financial advisors is a testament to our value. Experience the Trajan Wealth difference for yourself. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance. This is Trent Reed with Ryan Valuation, formerly Economics Partners. We built one of the premier valuation firms in the country, then were acquired by Ryan Tax for a great valuation, by the way. Now, as Ryan Valuation, we're the same top valuation practice with the resources of a global firm. Love him or hate him, or anything in between, if Trump had hired us, he wouldn't have New York claiming he owes them $354 million. I'm half kidding, but in all seriousness, there is no better team to hire for your valuation needs than my team. Whether you're an attorney needing help with litigation over a valuation matter, a business owner or executive needing your company valued for tax, financial reporting, or strategic reasons, a private equity partner needing valuation of your portfolio, or an accountant with a client needing evaluation, Ryan Valuation is the right call. We're headquartered here in Utah, but do our work nationwide. To hire the best, email us at valuations at ryan.com. That's valuations at ryan.com. My wife was like, I want to go to Hawaii and I want to bring the kids. And I was like, whose kids? Jim Gaffigan, Barely Alive Tour. I spent the entire time applying and reapplying sunscreen, which thankfully makes my skin whiter. Jim Gaffigan, a night of all new material. Friday, October 25th at Eccles Theater. Tickets available at jimgaffigan.com. Produced by Outback Presents. Any Hour Services can help you make sure your furnace keeps you warm this winter. Whether you need a tune-up or repair or a second opinion about replacing it, call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Jason Jones. And it's looking pretty fantastic out there as it has all morning long. We have no trouble at all. If you are on I-15 all along the Wasatch Front, north and southbound, between Payson and Ogden, regular speeds exist all over the place. No problems on the belt route in and out of Tooele, I-80, and the 201. Those are all looking good. And no trouble in your canyons either. Your major feeders are also uh, delay and accident free. Crossroads of the West Gun Show comes to Ogden this weekend at the Weber County Fairgrounds. Get great deals on guns, ammo, plus you can buy, sell, or trade at the show. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather, strong south winds through the day until the front moves through tomorrow afternoon. We'll see rain changing to snow going into Sunday. The valleys could get 2 to 5 inches in the northern mountains. Uh, We could get as much as 2 feet. Right now we're looking at 54 degrees, partly cloudy and windy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. The movie show is a Friday tradition, and it still is. Make sure you're listening for the new KSL movie show after Dave and Dujanovic. We have our favorite movies and a few stinkers. 11 this morning on KSL News Radio. It's finally Friday, and this is Dave and Dujanovic. Conversation and insights on the stories Utahns care about most. It's Friday on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Dujanovic. Special coverage of the top local story. And there's a lot we care about, but I think the biggest thing we care about is the weather. <laughs> and we have big winds uh, on their way. I could feel them. Uh, on my way in on I-80 this morning and I saw, you know, as I was feeling my car shifting, uh, nothing major, but I thought, oh my goodness, those drivers in those semi-trucks, you guys are all brave. 
men and women driving those things. Uh, hurricane force winds could blow through the Wasatch Front um, and beyond. Over the weekend, Dave, how was it at your house today? So I have trouble spots. I think everybody that lives in Utah has a wind trouble spot, whether it's a large tree where big limbs are coming down. Mine is my gazebo. My gazebo is my trouble spot when these big winds come in. It it just starts rattling around and, and kind of trying to float away. I had to throw uh, hundreds of pounds of weights and strap it down. You did? Yeah, because of the high wind storms. And Yikes. Yeah, it doesn't move now. Oh, but it's Wait. permanently tied down. Yeah, yeah. I've I ratcheted it down. So I think everybody kind of has this this concern in their house. Everyone's got something that they've got to be prepared for because we don't get them often. But a couple times a year, huge ones every few years that really cause some damage. You know what stories I remember doing over the years when I was um, um, a reporter, television news reporters, all of the blue spruces. Yes. They're like to- oh, yeah. basically like felt like Looked like there were tulip bulbs in the ground when the high winds came in. You know, it just uproot them because the roots are so shallow. Yeah. How is that the state tree? It makes <laughs> no sense. I can't messy. believe any are standing. It's so hard, and those things are so huge. And you know, when they go into the yards, and hopefully they don't go into the you know into the roof of homes. Uh, but those things are a mess to clean up. Uh, Nicole Bestmet. Did I say your last name right? That's good. Hi. Oh, good. Good morning. Hi, Nicole, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Thanks for jumping on the line with us. I've been seeing your 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 Twitter feed. Uh, you guys have been really posting a lot of information about this on social media, but let's uh, fill our listeners in on what we are expecting uh, starting today. Absolutely. So we have a very, very powerful cold front arriving tomorrow so you guys are going to notice this cold front passing tomorrow it's already windy so i'm sure you guys are already seeing some blowing dust and some strong winds it's going to get even windier tomorrow and especially tomorrow morning so we're expecting to see um widespread wind gusts 50 miles an hour upwards of 70 miles an hour in some cases but behind that front it's going to dramatically decrease so as soon as this front passes um expect those winds to drop off but behind that, we got snow and some heavy snow right behind it. So wind's ahead of it, snow behind it. Nicole, do we start seeing damage at that 50 to 70 mile an hour range? Usually, yes. So we are on the lookout for any falling trees, limbs, debris, uh, loss of power. Um, if any of those tree limbs fall on power lines, that's going to be an impact for you. Um, if you're driving tomorrow, that's going to be an impact, especially anybody with uh, high-profile vehicles or anybody with trailers. Um, are the winds going to really pick up around? I know we all have, fun, have problems with semi-trucks. Sometimes they land on their sides along I-80 as they uh, get toward Twila County there. Is is that going to be kind of a danger zone right in there for the high winds, Nicole? Yes, it absolutely will. Yeah, it felt like it was already kind of spinning up this morning. I was coming off Bangor Highway on I-80 by the airport there, and I, <laughs> I don't drive a semi truck, and I was uh, moving all around the road in the lane. Can we move around the country a little bit? There's been some extreme weather, and I, I think of Lake Tahoe, Deb. Uh, Lake Tahoe is seeing some some incredible amounts of snow. In fact, uh, Nicole, if you don't mind, let me play a little bit of the report from ABC News right now about what's happening at Lake Tahoe. Normally, snow attracts skiers, but this weekend, ski resorts around Lake Tahoe are putting out the message, don't visit. The National Weather Service is predicting up to 12 feet, 144 inches of snow in some areas. Kevin Cooper is a spokesman for multiple Tahoe ski resorts. He says a danger is too great that visitors will get stuck, unable to leave, and travel will be dangerous. Why would you want to put your family through that? And so ski resorts are telling people to stay away. Alex Stone, EBC News. So, Nicole, my question for you, is this the same storm that is heading our way, the same front? Yes, it is the same system. We're not expecting quite as severe impacts as as they are having, but we are expecting um, one to two feet of snow for upper cottonwoods. Um, So not quite as much snow as the Sierras are getting um, by several feet, but we are expecting some heavy snow in our mountains. When will the snow move in on the valleys? 
Yeah, so that's right behind the cold front tomorrow afternoon. So expect that um, after in the early afternoon hours, so between 1 and 3 o'clock. And then once all that blows through, does it look like we're going to warm up a little bit or are there some storms stacked on top of each other? Well, we're actually going to, you know, today's the warmer day before before the front. So we're actually going to be getting colder heading into the weekend. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. Nicole Bestment, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that in uh, Colorado, or excuse me, in Lake Tahoe area, the marketing there for the ski resorts has taken a sudden shift. And they're telling people don't come to the ski resorts because there's going to be what they say 10 about could be as much as 10 10, to 12 feet 10 to 12 feet of snow so it's going to be messy it's going to be cold um there's i'm sure the chances for avalanche dangers go way up in those areas so they're saying don't don't even bother i learned another thing about when when there's that amount of snow that's coming in snow can only stack so high and i think after just a few feet after three or four feet any snow that comes in, it starts compressing the underlayers. So it starts mm-hmm. compacting and becoming more dense. So you're you're not necessarily going to see 8, 10, 12 feet of snow stack, uh, stacked on top of each other, but it, it really just becomes denser and more compacted. So you're going to want to keep it right here at KSL News Radio for all your traffic updates over the weekend uh, as well as your weather updates. Uh, I want to tell you the go-to is our KSL not only KSL News Radio app, but also do this today. Text the word news to 57500. I get those uh, KSL News Radio alerts right to my phone. So when something big is happening, um, that push alert comes right to your cell phone on your text. You can see it, you can click on it for more information. Tons of helpful information. But look, when we've got high winds coming, 70 miles an hour along the Wasatch Front and a storm blowing in tomorrow that could dump, uh, you know, a couple of feet in the mountains, it sounds like, and maybe even some in the valley between starting about 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You want to start getting those text alerts today. Uh, Next, I've been trying to talk about this all week long, and the producers kept doing what we call floating the story. So basically, when they float the stories on us, what they do is they take the story out of our rundown and they move it to another day. Well, they've been moving this story that I've been doing this research on for the last four days. And finally, I told them, I'm boycotting my own show. If you don't let me talk about... Uh, the stadium problems that can happen, like once we decide to start funding the stadium and the idea that we want a stadium uh, or stadiums in Salt Lake City, which has been the big story all week long, that's when the real troubles can start. And it took 20 years in my home state of Arizona to get the Arizona Cardinals, which moved to the state in what, 1987, in the late 80s. It took Arizona, four different cities, and millions and millions and millions of dollars, and even trouble with the FAA to finally land the Arizona Cardinals football team, the NFL team, a stadium. So buckle in, folks. We're in for a ride. I'm going to walk you through it next. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Debbie go out of their way to make sure you hear all sides of a story. They're working the phones to get several viewpoints on for you. Hi, it's Tim and Amanda. We get you the full story, too. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Rick at loansbyrick.com has some important information for anyone in Utah and Idaho who's thinking of buying a house. Do it now. Don't wait until summer because home prices in those two states will likely increase by 10 to 20 percent due to in-migration from California and other states. That means a house that costs 400000 right now will go up by 40 to 80 grand with multiple offers. Interest rates may drop later in the year, possibly to the 6% range, but the increased cost of the home will mean that your monthly payments will go up by a lot. So start looking and buy now. Refinance when the interest rates go down. Waiting to buy your home will only hurt you. In the- For more details and buying strategies, call Rick at loansbyrick.com right now. 801-809-SAVE. Rick can evaluate your situation and get you on the path to buying a home today. 
800-801-8098-801-809-SAVE or click loansbyrick.com. Rick Kirschbaum, NMLS 241179 and Vintage Lending, NMLS 287106 are equal housing lenders. Some restrictions apply. When winter weather strikes. Terrible conditions from snow lingering from the overnight hours. KSL has you covered. One of our listeners said it took him an hour to get from Lehigh to Draper this morning. Don't let the sun fool you. The next blast of winter comes this weekend. Get an accurate forecast every 10 minutes on the nines on KSL News Radio. It's the movie show, guys, and we'll be broadcasting our show live today in a little less than an hour. And we are at the Larry H. Miller Megaplex Theaters. We are at Jordan Commons, and we're joined now by Jeff Whipple of uh, Jordan, uh, uh, well, all of Larry H. Miller. We like to call you uh, not just Jeff the Whipple, but you're, you're becoming more of a muckety-muck as we go along, Jeff. You know, I get to sell movies and popcorn for a living, which is not a bad gig. You know, they say <laughs> if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your that's, life. That's and how much magic. are you loving yesterday, today, and I mean, there's it, it's not even 11 o'clock, and there's a huge energy here of people just filing in. The, the first IMAX here at, Meg, at the Megaplex Theaters here at Jordan Commons is loading in right now for the first showings of today of uh, Dune Part 2. Guests are having a great time. They, the reaction from fans so far has been phenomenal. I would say, you know, it's, it's always great to see a movie on the big screen, but there are some movies where you have to see it on the big screen. This, this film is an it is an experience. It is so big. It is, you, you start to appreciate the scale. I, I used to think I could think like a filmmaker. This is a whole different level. Well, yeah, I love a, your prop set over here uh, with the <laughs> water of life. I don't think I'll be having a taste of that. Well, and that's the other thing. So fans who are coming to see Dune today, especially if they come here to uh, Jordan Commons, you can get, I, I don't see Paul Atreides here right now, but I did see him here earlier in the week. Uh, but you've got some photo op sets. We, it's a celebration. We have fans who are showing up in costume, ready to see this movie. We've had already, because of, of advanced screenings, promo screenings, we've had people that have already seen this too and working on the third time in an IMAX screen. I've seen it twice already. <laughs> I, and and that's, the kind of, that's the kind of fun we're having. And, and the good news is we've got great screens available, with, whether it's the IMAX screen, the Platinum X screens, our Dolby mm-hmm. Atmos auditoriums. We've got, we've got some serious real estate on screen, our great sound systems, our, our laser and digital projections. So this, oh, that, is, this is a great way to see that this. That worm scene on the IMAX, the seats were rumbling. It almost threw you out of your seat. You so know, I, I was outside the auditorium, and the walls were rumbling. It's, the, the subwoofer is doing its, certainly doing its wow. job. Well, we're going to talk a lot about Dune in today's movie show and as we talk with our friends here at Larry H. Miller Megaplex Theaters. But today's the day. Come in. It's always more fun to see it on day one when there's that palpable excitement with everybody else. There's, uh, there's very little like it, and there's nothing like seeing it at a Megaplex Theater. Would you like to be part of an important research study and receive up to $550? The Beehive Study at the University of Utah is comparing how well two different FDA-authorized booster vaccines protect people against COVID-19. You can decide to get a booster or not and still participate. By joining the Beehive Study, you'll have the chance to receive up to $550 for completing activities such as weekly COVID tests and brief surveys about your health. Call 801-203-0320 or email beehivestudy at utah.edu to learn more. You can also visit the study website at www www.beehivestudy.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, the Utah legislature has until midnight to finish up its work on bills and a $28 billion state budget. Second, Utah's getting strong south winds today in advance of a storm front expected tomorrow. And third, the classified documents case against former President Trump in a Florida courtroom today. 54 degrees, partly cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave, Dave and Dujanovic. Dujanovic. This week has been huge for our coverage of the funding for the Major League Baseball Park on the west side in the Fair Park area of Salt Lake City. And also now, as the legislative session winds down at midnight tonight, is the final hour of the session, uh, lawmakers on Capitol Hill trying to figure out a way to come up with a funding package. Uh, to fund a national um, an NHL arena and also um, an NBA ar- arena, a new a new arena for the Jazz, or refurbishing the old arena, and they are still trying to hash that out on Capitol Hill today. Uh, when it comes to the downtown NHL NBA combo, Dave, we talked to Holly Richardson of uh, Desert News and Utah Policy earlier. She's tracking this legislation. It, it's going to get done. 
But this isn't even the messiest part, at least in my view. I think things are going to get messier after this. Because these are all plants. They look amazing on paper. You start putting down the projections and, oh, it's only a half a percentage point on your sales tax. It's going to raise $83 million a year. This is incredible. Okay. What happens when you start digging ground? Mm -hmm. And that's when the real trouble starts. And you've seen it in another... And you've been you're big into the sports world. You're a sports producer for a number of years. You see these things. They get approved, they get a funding component in place, and then the residents get mad. Or in the case uh, that we're gonna look into right now, the FAA gets involved because there's a flight path issue. These are all things we're not talking about right now. But boy, this was a huge story down in my home state of Arizona when the uh, St. Louis Cardinals NFL team um, and Bill Bidwell, the owner, I remember that right, you know, back in 1987, moves the team out west. And we were so ecstatic. I grew up there. I went to Arizona State University. Yeah. And I remember when the announcement was made. It was very, very exciting. It was like we had the Suns, much like Utah has the Jazz. Very similar. And that was it. Right. We had like a triple A baseball team, but we didn't almost have, identical. Yeah, Deb. this we, is such a good comparison. We didn't have an MLB team. The Diamondbacks came later. Yep. Um, we had the Phoenix Suns. Didn't have the Phoenix Coyotes. The didn't hockey have the Coyotes. team yet. So I went down uh, the investigative path, so to speak, to figure out um, what happened to uh, the Arizona Cardinals. I remember, remind myself what happened to the Arizona Cardinals when they arrived in the Valley of the Sun. Um, and it got messy. It got messy. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is what's going to happen to our MLB ballpark, or this is definitely what's going to happen downtown with the NHL or the NBA arena when we start rebuilding or rebuilding, revitalize downtown. I'm just saying this is what can happen. And it was messy for 20 years years guys 20 years that took my breath away can i walk you down the path dave yes um four different cities get involved now if you haven't been to my home town of phoenix then you probably don't know um how things are structured it is just wall-to-wall city even though there are lots of different cities so for this journey this will include the city of phoenix of course the capital It'll include Glendale, right next door, out west. Um, And then it'll include Mesa, kind of to the east, and Tempe, where Arizona State is. And that's where I went to college. Um, And this project shifts year after year after year. I'd like to say it was like a hot potato that turned into a tug of war between Mesa, Tempe, Phoenix, and Glendale. And Glendale really wanted it all along, but they were, I'll just be honest with you, they're the west side, and they had some issues popping up with some crime. And I'm not going to say that's why they were largely ignored, but that they have the stadium now, okay? So Glendale was the eventual, became the eventual home of the stadium, but they were um, Initially, almost, they were yeah, ignored. No, for quite okay. some time. They kept trying to bid on it, and it was like the door kept slamming in their face. So let's start with Mesa. Mesa really went all in. In 1999, they came up with this near $2 billion retail stadium. There was like an event center or a conference center included. Revitalization zone? Oh, sure. <laughs> Um, and, and Mesa and the city council is really excited about it. And they're in talks with the Cardinals and it would have been a huge win for Mesa, but then they figure out and the residents start figuring out that the Cardinals in the deal would get to keep a chunk of the tax revenue and even the parking revenue. Like it was getting into the nitty gritty and the, the, the townspeople went wild And in a letter to the editor that I found, uh, thanks to, by the way, the NBC affiliate, Channel 12 News down there, um, knew a lot of people who worked there back in the day. They're uh, they're actually the ones who put this timeline together, so I want to give them credit where credit is due. Um, And some of it's 
from my memory too, but mainly a lot of their work. Uh, one letter to the ed- editor at the Arizona Republic said, this is childish. It's a macho game. The taxpayers are all being forced to play at taxpayers' expense. So <sighs> Cardinals packed it up. And let's move over to Tempe. Uh, Tempe tries this, and they leave some important things out of their bid, Dave, uh, like the $1. million lease of land. That was huge. And also the $37,000 a month water bill that just wasn't included in the bid. So that wasn't the only problem. What also happened is the FAA got involved because the site they had chosen was a hundred. Uh, the the planes were going to be zooming in to Sky Harbor International Airport only 170 feet above the highest point Stop of the it. stadium. Now but that is a flyover. You could practically reach out and reach up and touch the planes. So the FAA got up in arms. They they deemed it a hazard. Of course. And then there was a offer to um, like make amends with this. By doing like a sunken stadium. Remember the sunken living rooms from like the 80s and 90s? Yeah. Just it was dig like, a big hole and drop it in the middle. Yeah. The sunken stadium. And eventually they figured out, oh, wait a minute. We're going to be open to a lot of lawsuits. What happens if the worst happens? Yeah. What happens if one of those plane landings goes between the goalposts? We better not. Uh, Phoenix tried too, as well. The actual capital city tried as well. Which would have been the best place. But again, it's like here, where. Where, yeah. Where is a big question mark. Where is a big question mark. Phoenix proper is pretty well built out. I guess you could go in and take out some hotels and some old apartment complexes. But Glendale had a site. Glendale had a lot of also like farmland. So... Um, they eventually made it work, but in order for Glendale to win, and they actually they're the, they're, they've got the hockey arena too. So they've got um, the Cardinal Stadium and they've got the hockey arena there. They had to get the support of seven mayors on the west side to sign on to this. Hurting cats, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and they had, the city had to come up with some of the construction costs as well. Ultimately, it was built... It was like a year behind schedule. It was 20 years behind schedule, actually. Because <laughs> they did have to play at uh, Arizona State University for a lot of years. They played at Sun Devil Stadium. The Cardinals did. And they did just fine. Maybe not. Maybe not in terms Record-wise. Of, yeah, right. but they did just fine there. But it, it ended up costing $455 million. Uh, it has a retractable roof, too, which is something else we're going to talk about. Retractable roofs, um, $455 million, and they finally got uh, into the building in August of 2006. So I say, After a short 20-year process. I say we got, we got to buckle up because you just never know. I think the, the, like when the, by the time the FAA got involved with the flight path issue, <laughs> it's like you're reading this timeline. I'm like, oh, my goodness, you just never know. You know what's going to be what's going to be uh, the issue? That's the hangup. In part because this is why you got to get all your ducks lined up mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Your ducks in a row, everything lined up, so that when the expansion leagues are looking at Salt Lake, it is a rubber stamp. It is easy. The funding, the mm-hmm. location, all of that is done. So if you're wondering why are we talking about this five, six years before it could even be a possibility. Your example is exactly why we're addressing it now. Next, we're going to go back up to Capitol Hill and check in on a lot of things, uh, not only the funding, but also the Great Salt Lake. This will probably be one of the most impactful and most important bills that we pass ever in regards to the Great Salt Lake. It's 1031 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top local story this hour. Rocky Mountain Power looking to batten down the hatches around the Wasatch Front as it prepares for a winter storm. 
KSL News Radio's Heather Kelly has more. Officials say this weekend storm could bring down power lines and cause outages. Rocky Mountain Power reports it already has crews ready to respond to any issue this winter storm brings. They're also reminding everyone, including kids and pets, to stay away from downed trees and power lines as the wires could be live and very dangerous. You can get more information on how to prepare for and report an outage in your area at RockyMountainPower.net. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. A heart-wrenching scene in the small town of Stinnett, Texas, left in ruins by the state's worst wildfire. ABC's Matt Goodman is there. Those deadly wildfires blazing through more than a million acres in Texas. On Thursday, firefighters taking advantage of favorable conditions. With only 3% of the fire contained, thousands of residents forced to abandon their homes, in many cases, their livelihoods. The wildfires in the Texas panhandle have killed at least two people. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, up on the day. So is the NASDAQ right now. And just ahead, we'll be looking at that weekend storm on the way. KSL News Time 1032. News doesn't just mean information or dates. It's the story of our local history being told in real time. Be a part of the story. This is Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. We hope to be a part of your story. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Be advised, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to save 40 to 80% on a hot tub and swim spa this weekend only, today through Sunday. Utah State Fair Park. Be advised, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to save 40 to 80% on a hot tub and swim spa this weekend only, today through Sunday. Utah State Fair Park. 18 month interest free financing. Our factories have demanded we sell 1,000 hot tubs and swim spas this weekend. Utah State Fair Park. Huge factory incentives, factory rebates this weekend only. Utah State Fair Park. We can remove your old hot tub. Free delivery of your new hot tub. Hot tub starting at $2,999. Utah State Fair Park. Free delivery of your new hot tub. Just relax and enjoy. Utah State Fair Park. Friday, noon to 8 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Free admission, free parking, free delivery. Utah State Fair Park. Call 833-SPA-SALE or visit hottubandswimspasale.com. It's the movie show, guys, and we are going to be having our show today. And we are broadcasting right now live from the Megaplex Theaters in Sandy at the Jordan Commons. And we're joined now by Jeff Whipple of Megaplex Theaters. And, uh, Jeff, I, I was noticing uh, just as good with any good big movie release, Megaplex has got non-weird <laughs> Dune popcorn tubs <laughs> and Dune cups. They look gorgeous. The souvenir popcorn tubs and, uh, and drink cups, they're going really fast. Uh, we're, we're selling through them, so we're encouraging guests, if they want them, come get them now because these, these are a limited supply. But, yes, these, these are a very fun tribute to the film. Uh, we also have a, a limited quantity at select locations, uh, some of the mini movie posters, which guests are also snatching up, which is oh. fun. Oh. So, yeah, we've got... Like the full size? Oh, the no, smaller these are, ones. these are the mini oh, posters. Mini posters. Okay. And we've also got ones featuring IMAX with a different image. And yeah, we've got in this one. You've got uh, Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet right there. And and we may a little bit later set up a you know a little prize package for a Dune fan out there. So we'll see we'll oh, see how that comes together. Well, now to, we have to say the Megaplex always takes excellent care <laughs> of the movie show listeners. So I have no doubt that before we're done with our show today, somebody's going to some lucky fan is going to walk away with a whole bunch of stuff. We're, we're fortunate we have the best movie fans in the world. In fact. Fans in Utah are driving the energy for this movie. It's it's topping we, Google t- trends. We can tell already one started because the room is empty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All the people. The, the, the first wave has now gotten into the theaters. It is it is a phenomenon of these buildings because they're massive. They can hold a n- large number of people. But once the audit, once the movie starts, yeah. they all they're migrate gone. into an auditorium. Now, Jeff, I know not everybody can get off work like these super dedicated <laughs> fans. What about the ones who want to come tonight? Are you sold out? No, no, no. We've got plenty of tickets available, and we're adding more show times to make sure people are getting a chance to see this film. Yeah, and this is one you want to see on the biggest screen possible, and Megaplex has some. If, if it's not the IMAX here at Jordan Commons, you've got a lot of other options. Five IMAX locations, seven Platinum X locations, which are the, the biggest screens, Dolby Atmos sound, 
state-of-the-art projection it's it's a great experience it's the first big blockbuster of 2024 it's dune part two we'll be giving our review on the movie show when it starts here in about a half an hour we'll be talking more with our friends from the larry h miller megaplex theaters traffic and weather together brought to you by sinclair's dino pay app save up to 20 cents per gallon Here's Jason Jones. And it's still looking really good as it has been all morning long. This is one of the most fantastic drives I think we've had uh, along the Wasatch Front. And it uh, just continues coming out of Utah County. No problems at all on I-15. Likewise, up in Weber and Davis Counties, it's going to be smooth sailing from Ogden down to Salt Lake City. The Belt Route is looking fantastic. No problems in your canyons up to Park City. or uh, And no problems on I-80 or 201 out to Tooele or in from Tooele for that matter. Big O Tires is your one-stop shop for tires and service. Service now through March 17th, buy three and get one free on select seat sets of tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather, strong south winds through the day. Actually, we've got some blowing dust right now in the Salt Lake area. We'll see rain changing to snow into Sunday after that front arrives. Valleys could get two to five inches, the northern mountains up to two feet. And right now, uh, 55 degrees. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories. On KSL News Radio, Eye on the Hill 2024. Special coverage with Dave and Dejanovic. It is down to the wire right now up on Capitol Hill. Uh, lawmakers. We'll go into recess. Uh, they'll adjourn at midnight tonight, and there's a lot of work that has to be done. It's typical for the last day of the legislative session. Uh, and we've got you covered all day long as we come down to those final minutes. Uh, Boyd Matheson, uh, one to three. Uh, Jeff Kaplan, three to seven. Uh, special coverage as well tonight, KSL at night from seven to nine, all live on Capitol Hill. So they will be there as uh, news is breaking and bring you the very latest. And we may see some big changes. We thought the Major League Baseball bill was was getting done. Uh, we thought there was going to be a hotel room tax that helped fund it. But there were massive changes at the last minute where they just said, oh, the entire way we were going to fund it, never mind, we're getting rid of that. And that was the bill they passed. So we think we know what's going on, but there could be some significant changes in the last few hours. We not only have uh, that bill, which passed and went over to the governor's desk, um, but we also have the NBA slash NHL arena arenas legislation. They're trying to figure out how to fund that and get that package passed tonight. Taxpayers likely on the hook for millions and millions of dollars because the preferred method of funding is a sales tax increase in Salt Lake City. We also have our very own Adam Small keeping a very close eye on what's going on with water and the Great Salt Lake. Adam, you have been just spectacular uh, in terms of following this legislation. And you said you ran in here and said, I've got five things to talk about on Capitol Hill. And I said, <laughs> well, if you can't cram it all in, that's okay, because we have live coverage all day long on the Hill. We'll be reporting on more this afternoon. Yeah, so let's start with the biggest one. This is one I actually want to start here with a soundbite from Utah House Speaker Mike Schultz, who described this bill related to the Great Salt Lake. This will probably be one of the most impactful and most important bills that we pass ever in regards to the Great Salt Lake. So the bill he's talking about is this is a bill that it tries to find a delicate balance between these several mineral extraction companies that work on the Great Salt Lake. They extract salt, uh, lithium, uh, all sorts of stuff. Magnesium. Like magnesium. All go, that some of them supply, like for example, U.S. Magnesium, they supply the country's worth of supply of magnesium. So these really important companies, but it puts limits on how much water they can use on the lake under the current law. If, in theory, they would never use this much water, but in theory, if they needed to evaporate the entire Great Salt Lake to get their minerals, under the current writing, they could. Now, they obviously wouldn't. They don't use nearly that much water, but it basically puts them under the same ground rules of water use in the Great Salt Lake Basin as every other user. Um, it also addresses the royalties, the severance tax they pay because the Great Salt Lake is public land, It's and under Utah's public use doctrine, it's owned by the people. They pay a share of what they make to the state, 
It updates those agreements, but also in that agreement gives them a huge discount if they find new ways to extract minerals oh. without using water. So if they say, hey, you forego the evaporation process, they pay about, I think it's 7.8% of uh, in a severance tax to the state. If they went without using water, it would drop that to 2.6%. That's, that sounds like a huge incentive. That, that would save them millions of, like uh, potentially millions of dollars. Wow. And in fact, the Wall Street Journal did some great reporting on this. There's a lithium company that wants to extract lithium out doing that very thing where typically you would take it out, let it evaporate, take the minerals. But they've developed a process or are developing a process where they could bring the water in, process it in a few hours, extract the lithium, then shoot it back into the lake. And to your point, there could be some huge rewards there. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about like, you know, more than half of your severance tax being wiped away on a given year if you find ways to get those minerals without using water. We lean on Adam Small here at KSL News Radio to know everything there is to know about what is going on in the Great Salt Lake. And so he's uh, been paying close attention to what's happening on Capitol Hill with GSL. Uh, do, what's the status of that legislation? Um, so that legislation, I'll be doing a full in-depth report for the afternoon show today. That is on its way to the governor's desk. So okay. just passed both bodies, got final approval last night. You hit, can you hit another one for us? Yeah, so um, another big one that you heard from me yesterday, uh, Stuart Adams talked with us a couple weeks ago when he introduced this. It's to, it's to create a council to get out-of-state water sources for Utah, find more ways to bring more water into Utah. That one is also on its way to the governor's desk. Um, there's also another one that I'm keeping a close can, eye on. Can that you would... just take take a time out real oh, quick? Yeah. I want to back up on that one because uh, he has talked about this, that like Nevada was helping California uh, build or fund d- desalination plants there. And in exchange, they were going to get some of California's water from the Colorado River. We would keep it instead yeah. of sending and, it downstream. And, and he said... Like, that's our idea. And Nevada was first out of the gates on it. So we need to uh, make our good ideas materialize into action. And so that, to me, is that piece of legislation you just spoke of, Adam, is is what's addressing that. Yeah, exactly. So it creates that council that actually would, instead of just thinking of that idea, and I don't know how we would do this, it would create that council to be able to actually go to California and be like, hey, what if we do the same thing Nevada is doing? Awesome. What do you guys say? Road so, trip time. Get yourselves to California well, and figure uh, it out. Obviously, a host of other ideas. Sure. But the last one I wanted to just touch real quick is it's not a bill. It's an appropriation. So they're just asking for money. Um, Representative Doug Owens wants to start a split season leasing program for farmers. So basically, if you let some of your crops die, um, I believe it's later in the season where they don't yes. get as many crops. Um, we just want $500,000 to start this, compensate those farmers so they can send that water they would have used right down to the Great Salt Lake. But that needs to be approved. I believe the budget is one of the last things they work on. Um, That needs to be approved in the budget, so that one we're still yet to know. Yeah, that's key. Adam. Good job. Yeah, it's key because they're not telling farmers to not grow on their land. They're just saying don't plant that final crop in the fall, and then we'll take all that water that you were going to use, send it out. But they have to incentivize them so they don't go broke. Right, right? exactly. Because they're going to make money off that crop. So, Adam, awesome coverage. Thanks for making it digestible for all of us to understand. <laughs> it's a tough thing to do. You and I, uh, uh, Dave, we've all been reading legislation. Everybody here at Broadcast House has been reading uh, legislation. Sometimes those can get a little in the weeds and hard to read through. Thanks for sorting through all of that. We'll look forward to your coverage this afternoon. Don't forget, KSL News Radio, all in on the last day, the last hours of the legislative session. We'll be broadcasting live starting at 1 o'clock this afternoon from Capitol Hill. Our team of reporters, producers, hosts will be caravanning up to the hill to bring you the latest in live coverage uh, from Capitol Hill. Uh, Straight ahead, Steve and Andy, uh, they take over the microphone at 11 o'clock in the movie show. Uh, It sounds like a good weekend, Dave, to head to the movies. (laughs) It's a big one. And the reviews of Dune Tour are starting to come out. Apparently, it's amazing. So excited to talk to those guys. Yeah, and they have a question for us. Be thinking on this. They They want us to to talk about our favorite middle chapter of any movie trilogy. So oh, think on that, it. okay? I've think got a million. Oh, mine mine goes back to the 70s. I could bet you mine is the best. Next. Dave and Dujanovic. Current events can have a lot of moving parts. Our job is to make it easy to keep up. You're part of a bigger world. So spend 15 or 20 minutes here and be part of it. Join us weekday mornings between 5 and 9 on KSL News Radio. 
I'm Jason Walton, candidate for U.S. Senate. I'm recording from the Tucson sector of our southern border, and nobody's here. Our government should defend our territory. But President Biden, Mitch McConnell, and career politicians are funding war in other countries while the cartels are waging unchecked war here on American soil. I'm standing up to build the wall, end catch and release, and secure the border. Stand with me. I'm Jason Walton, and I approve this message. Paid for by friends of Jason Walton for Senate. Andy Farnsworth, Steve Sales, the movie show, guys. We're just minutes away from starting the movie show, but uh, we're here at the Larry H. Miller Megaplex Theaters. We're at the Jordan Commons location. And, Steve, I think you'll agree. I, I like to. I, I think that the Megaplex Theaters is the best place to watch a movie in Utah, and it's not even close. Oh, we are spoiled rotten. I've talked to people who live in other parts of the country, and I've been home to my hometown in California. Nothing compares to what you get here. I've been enjoying a drink that's ex available exclusively at Megaplex Theaters. We have a Coke Freestyle machine at our work, and I cannot get this particular flavor. It's called the Mega Twist that has strawberry cream. Strawberry cream soda, yeah. Yeah. It, but it's, it's I've, I've tried to come up with my own doctored version. doesn't taste as good. I, we've, we felt like connoisseurs when we were testing it because they gave us about 17 different variations. <laughs> well, do you like a little bit more strawberry, a little bit more vanilla? It, it, it's, you had to it's, swish it around in the mouth exactly, and then spit it exactly. into the big dish. A nice bouquet. It was lovely. <laughs> so, yes, a Mega Twist is actually, interestingly, uh, Utah fans really like taking a little bit of extra time on their flavors for freestyle machines. And they, the freestyle machine for Mega Twist has been one of those that has just outperformed everyone's expectations, including Coca-Cola's. Right, and huh. my kids were like, oh, I don't want to try that. And I was like, try it. And then they're like, oh, this is my favorite. Like, instant. It's, it's what I've got over here, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. But that's the kind of thing you get at a Larry H. Miller Megaplex Theater. You get treated like that. And, and here's one thing we haven't even had a chance to talk about yet is the awesome opportunity you have to get a mega tub or a mega mug. So you can really, if you're a moviegoer like, like we are in my family, we got a mega mug for everybody. And the fact that you can refill it for such a low price, and I, it's just, you guys treat your guests so well. We, we want to make it available for everyone. And we have so many people that love coming as a family, so you, you can feed the whole gang with one of the mega tubs. Uh, the other thing is, it's a great gift. So if you want you, the movie lover in your life, great way to give them something for the holidays, for Father's Day, Mother's Day, graduation, whatever is coming. Um, handing off one of those, and you don't have to worry about the return policy because people like to keep their Megaplex popcorn. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. we are going to talk about all of this when we get into the movie show and when we'll finally be able to reveal what we thought of Dune Part 2 from the Megaplex Theaters. If you're looking to get a new car, you could really cut expenses by bundling your car and renter's insurance with Progressive. Sure, you love your old car, but you know it's not normal to give instructions on how to open the window. It should be self-explanatory, but it's not. And notice how when you're in other people's cars, you can feel cushion in the seats? That's pretty nice, right? No, it's just normal. So bundle your renters and car insurance with Progressive and put the savings toward a new car. It's time. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Not available in all states. Starting with one store in 1978, Boot Barn has become the largest Western and workwear retailer in the nation. Supporting those who feed, build, and protect America, we offer the largest selection of cowboy boots, work boots, Western wear, workwear, and outdoor gear. With over a half a million pairs of boots and thousands of top quality jeans and clothing, it's an honor to support the people who make our country so great. Boot Barn. Keep West. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bombas. First, Utah's getting ready for big winds and a winter storm this weekend. Second, the Utah legislature trying to pass as many bills as it can before the general session ends at midnight. Third, a wildfire in Texas has burned over a million acres and destroyed the town of Stanett. Right now, 55 degrees, blowing dust in Salt Lake City. And back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. We're getting word from KSL.com now that Utah lawmakers uh, have approved the legislation that will uh, pave the way for the revitalization of downtown Salt Lake City. And at the center of that uh, will be an NHL arena and likely a new or refurbished uh, NBA arena as well. 
Uh, we've been talking at great lengths about this. This comes on the heels of what lawmakers decided to do to fund um, an MLB stadium on the west side of Salt Lake City. This would new package that just got passed moments ago up on Capitol Hill would fund uh, at least provide some taxpayer resources funding for uh, NHL and NBA in downtown Salt Lake City through a sales tax increase that is exclusive to the Salt Lake City area. Yeah, and as we were talking to Holly Richardson earlier, uh, she indicated that maybe that would that would expand out to more of Salt Lake County. So I don't know, did, did you see that, if that had been eliminated If it really does narrow it down to just Salt Lake City. I can assure you this. By the time we hit the airwaves uh, up on Capitol Hill at uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon, right after the movie show, um, we're going to be live up there all uh, afternoon and into the evening uh, covering. We will have those details uh, for you. But this is a big development. Uh, It just happened moments ago that the Senate decided to concur with some of the changes that were made in the House uh, last night and voted in favor of it. Uh, the bill now heading over uh, just down the hall to Governor Spencer Cox's desk for his signature. Another layer to this, it won't just be an infrastructure thing. They're going to make investments in to new public safety, uh, downtown safety concerns, homelessness mitigation, as well as transportation, parking plans as well. There's a lot, a lot to sort through on this. Uh, big development. So now uh, we have the funding in place for a a major league ballpark in the Fair Park area of Salt Lake City and also an NBA uh, slash NFL or NHL. Sorry, didn't mean to scare (laughs) y'all. NHL arena. My heart leapt. Two arenas. (laughs) Don't even say NFL right now. I can't digest it all. This has all happened in a week, folks. One week. That's a lot. You made such an incredible comparison. I didn't realize how how accurate it was, but you took us down to Phoenix yeah. when they got the NFL team. And Phoenix back in the 80s is very similar to Salt Lake right now. You know, they, they just had uh, the Phoenix Suns, and then they expanded and grew and started bringing in more professional teams in that surrounding area. The Phoenix area has exploded mm-hmm. over the last 20 years once they started expanding, and it, whether it's correlation or causation the fact that they have everything they have major league baseball they have the nfl they have hockey they have everything down there and they've exploded we are on the same trajectory this is the plans that's going on right now i can tell you uh, growing up in phoenix we were we were just we're known for the suns and that was it and a minor league baseball team we were the feeder team to the san francisco giants um and that was it Kind of like the bees were. Yeah, you had your great the colleges the, there the as well. Yeah, but it wasn't ASU, until you brought in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, welcome, welcome to Phoenix, folks. <laughs> the Phoenix of the. We're, well, welcome to the Valley Midwest, of the Sun. Yeah. The following preview has been rated G and is appropriate for all audiences. The movie show live from the Megaplex Theater in Sandy. Uh, Dune Part Two. Out now. Oh, sounds like a big weekend. You going to be at the movies, Dave? Yeah, I'm excited for this. And it looks really, really cool. So excited to have Andy and Steve here. Uh, you guys, this is, a, this is a big weekend. You don't always get incredible releases, but this is definitely one of those weeks. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> I was blown away. I don't want to give away too much because we're going to review it in our segment. But uh this is worth the wait. I was upset last year when they postponed it because of the Hollywood strike, and they right. moved it off of the Thanksgiving date till now. But uh, it's worth it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> oh, okay. Steve, said, Steve says with a copy of an almost an original copy of Dune with him. Wow, wow, you guys. I okay. wish I had an original. The first edition just sold for. Twenty thousand dollars oh. for the Dune book, yeah. Wow. Um, well, we'll be listening because it sounds like you guys are coming at this from two different points of view. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to lower expectations because <laughs> okay. sometimes when I'm you, afraid yeah. that I'm going to set the bar so high, people so, are going to be like, "Yeah, it was okay." So what's so what's the question of the week for uh, so Dave and I? Here's the thing. So this is Dune Part Two, and it's going to be at least part of a trilogy. 
And so the question we have is, what is your favorite middle chapter of a movie trilogy? Because there's lots of movie trilogies. And what's your favorite middle chapter? Okay, Dave goes first. Wait, are are we going first? You Uh, guys got to tell us yours. Yeah, you go first. Okay. All All right. right, So, well, (laughs) well, I I feel like it needs explanation. Maybe we'll do that part in the movie show. But my favorite middle chapter of a movie trilogy is a tie between Empire Strikes Back and the Two Towers. You can't choose two, Andy. What planet do you live on? Yeah. Wow. I can choose as many as I want. You get your second choice. If I had to pick one or the other, I'd go with Empire Strikes Back. Okay, that's not fair because I don't think you were alive when the original was released. Yes, I was. Okay. I saw it. In the th- I was five. Oh, but. You were five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Uh, how about how about you, uh, Steve? Well, I it, it's tough because last week we talked about how you can't stick the landing yes. in the third yes. film. So, to me, I would think The Godfather um, ah. probably the best sequel. That's what I thought you were going to say, Deb. Oh was no, Godfather I, I, Part Two. I, out of the, so when I knew this question was com- coming um, uh, in the in the story meeting this morning, I jumped up and I immediately said, "Empire Strikes Back." I will but fail it- you. I'm not afraid. I'm getting the goosebumps. <laughs> you will be. You will be. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm getting the goosebumps compete? just There's hearing that. There's nothing that's better than Empire. And Kay. he was so Dave was so mad at me for picking that. I was but so jealous she beat me to it. Here's my question, Deb. <laughs> Did you like it that much when it came out? Because I have found there was a whole yeah. subset of fans in 1980 yeah. that thought C-3PO was too whiny. Yeah. They hated the fact that it was a cliffhanger, and they didn't like uh, you know, all these things. But over well, time, they realized, wow, that was really, really good. Okay, so huh. my problem was I wasn't five. I was ten uh, when uh, the OG came out, and that was by far the best for me. I mean, the excitement of going to the movie theater with my mom and my sister and getting a real bucket of real buttered popcorn, it was a big deal. So it's hard for the Empire Star- It came out like, what, four or five years later? Three. Three years later. Okay. Yeah. It's really hard for me to say, oh, I liked it so much better than Star Wars. But of all of the trilogy movies that I've I've muscled through over the years, that would be that would be my pick. And isn't this the one where Darth Vader divulges that he's Luke's father? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, Dave's for something a, that happened 40 years ago. 100 years later. <laughs> yeah, if, you have a, if you're just on your way home to watch it for the first time, I am so sorry. <laughs> and Bruce Willis is a ghost. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dave, go. you got 30 seconds. Okay, I've got, I've got the second best one. Empire's number one, but this is clearly number two. And why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. Uh, what would I do without you? Oh, I get the creeps. Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, no. No. No, you... You will complete me. That's a good choice. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad. strong choice. Strong. It's the best choice that's not Empire Strikes Back. Wow. You okay. guys, the uh, you Dark Knight, are you Dune Part kidding two me? Yet. Dave has declared. Yeah, that's the beauty of this is we're seeing the middle movie here, which I think is going to be the best because it's really hard to wrap these things up in a really nice bow. Without people going, wait, what? Oh, yep. no. And we'll keep talking in the movie show of why I think the middle chapter is always the best. I love it. Awesome. I love it. You guys Looking are awesome. Nice it. job. Look forward to it. But the clear winners here, Debbie number one, I get silver, you and your weird, like, Godfather <laughs> 2, whatever, man. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 11 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bombas. KSL's 